In this video, we'll see some of the most common vulnerabilities in Android apps. So common that even top companies make these mistakes. This video is sponsored by Bvisual. Bvisual is the internet's first mobile app security search engine where you can type an app name or a code or patterns and you can get a whole report on the vulnerabilities of the app and a lot more along with the security score out of 10. Now this is incredibly helpful because you could do all the static testing you want on any Android app in just a click of a button. Now we will be using Bvisual throughout this video to find or explore different vulnerabilities that we're going to talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll be talking about four most common Android app vulnerabilities that persist on the client side. Now these are some basic mistakes that developers make, which in turn makes their apps users vulnerable to other malicious app or hackers. So let's see what they are, shall we? Insecure login. If you write code, you know that the most basic way to figure out or debug an issue is to print stuff to the logs and see what exactly your code is doing wrong and then fix the issue based on what you see in the logs. Now there's nothing wrong with it. Every developer does this, but the problem arises when you actually forget to remove these print statements slash log statements when you're deploying your app to the customer environment. You see, when you're writing something to the logs, they get stored in a location which other apps can potentially access. So if you're printing something sensitive into the app's log, you know that's bad. For example, consider this application. It's called Diva, which stands for Damn Insecure Vulnerable Application. It is specifically made for pen testing purposes. In this screen, it takes the credit card details as the input from the user and then logs it. Now, I'll make use of ADB, which is short for Android Device Bridge, to read the generated logs of the app. ADB is a command line tool that you can install on your computer and use it to communicate with your Android device via a USB connection. So first I'll enter the shell by saying ADB shell and then I will make use of logcat to read the logs. And there you go. You can see that the credit card number we entered in the app is logged and we are able to read it conveniently from the app's log. Now, you don't have to actually use ADB in order to find an issue like this in an app. Issues like these can be found by doing static analysis on the app's code. And guess what? Bvisual does this incredibly well. Let's see how to use it. You can go to bvisual.com and then type in the name of an app which you want to scan. Bvisual has pre-generated reports of all the popular Android apps. So if you type an app that is already big, for example, let's say GeoChat, the reports come up instantly because the app is already scanned and the reports are already generated. So you can go through the report and you can see what Bvisual has to say about that particular app. But if you're trying to scan your own app or an app that is not so big or an app that is not even on the Play Store, don't worry, you can still do it. But in order to do this, you need to first create an account on bvigil.com and then you can upload your own APK for bvigil to scan. And once the scan is finished, you can see the scanned apps reports. Anyway, here's a report of the My Vodafone app, which is a very popular app on the Play Store. Now you can see that there is a vulnerability that says sensitive information in logs. If you click on it, you can also see the part of the code where the log statements are present and what exactly they are logging. In this case, it seems like the app is logging some sensitive, dynamic generated values in the code, which are potentially dangerous to be exposed like that in the logs. Number two, hard coding issues. Hard coding something sensitive in your code is always bad because even after you compile your project into an APK, your APK file can still be reversed into your source code once you release your app. So people can read your source code and they can see all the secret information which you might have included in your code. Like for example, API keys, webhooks, etc. For example, consider the same Diva application that we used earlier. Let's actually see how easy it is to decompile this APK. I will first convert this APK into RAR format by simply changing the extension by renaming the file. And then I simply extract the RAR file and after extracting it, there is a classes.dex file which is basically the compiled Java code of the app. Now I'll make use of a tool called dex to jar to convert this dex file into a jar file. Finally, I can decompile this jar file using a Java decompiler. And there you go. That's the source code of the entire app. Now let's see some real world scenarios where sensitive details are hard coded in 
Android apps. If you look at this Be Vigil report for the Owen Story Pizza application, you can see that it found different secrets in the app's strings, one of which is AWS API keys. And the severity of this issue is high. Now, an API key is a very sensitive piece of information in most of the cases. When you're sending a request to an API from your app, you basically include your API key with this request so that the API service can identify you and it can validate that you are who you say you are. So leaked API keys mean that anyone else who have your API keys can send requests to the API services on behalf of your app without your permission, which is really bad. Number three, insecure data storage. Every Android app needs to store data locally. For example, let's say you're logging into an app. Once you have logged in, the app can offer you an autofill feature that will fill in your username and password automatically from next time. In order to fulfill this feature, the app actually needs to store your credentials somewhere locally. In Android, the two most basic places to store something locally are shared preferences and SQLite databases. Now, both of these locations are private to every app, which means the shared preferences of one app cannot be accessed by another app unless your device is rooted. You probably already heard about rooting an Android device. It simply means removing the protective layer that Android offers, which makes your device more vulnerable to hackers, but it also gives you more administrative control over your own device. So let's say your device is rooted. In this case, the shared preferences and the databases of your apps can be accessed by each other and hence they can also be accessed by a malicious party. So now when your credentials are stored locally by the app, it means they are exposed. The only way to counter this is to make use of cryptographic techniques to encrypt anything sensitive before storing it locally. In this case, even if the app's storage is compromised in rooted phones, the data still doesn't make any sense because it's all encrypted. So a hacker who might have had hands-on on that data cannot do anything with it. Here are some of the apps that seem to store sensitive information in their shared preferences according to BeVigil. The Book My Show app seems to be storing an access token into the shared preferences without encrypting it first. The Uber driver app also seems to be storing something sensitive, in this case, Google OAuth tokens in the shared preferences. Number four, input validation issues. Input validation is a key when it comes to app security. Without proper input validation, you are screwed. There are a lot of injection techniques which can be exploited if you are not properly sanitizing the input provided by your user. For example, let's consider SQL injection. Let's say your app is taking some input from the user and then including this in an SQL statement to do some operation on the database like read, write, update, delete, etc. However, the user input can be something like this, which when included in the SQL statement looks like this. This clearly changes the whole purpose of the SQL statement. And now instead of fetching the details of a specific user, the SQL statement fetches and displays the information of all the users in the database, which is not supposed to happen. This is called SQL injection. I've already made a clear demonstration on SQL injection. So if you want to check it out, the links will be in the description below, or maybe I'll even include them in the suggested card. So go check it out if you want to learn more about SQL injection. Using a vulnerability like this, a malicious party can get unprivileged access to the local database of the Android app. They can now read data, insert new data, or even worse, delete all the data from the database. Have a look at this Be Visuals report of the Domino's app on Play Store. You can see that it includes the user input in an SQL statement without properly sanitizing it first. Now, all an attacker has to do is to figure out a way to change this input parameter that is being sent to the SQL statement in order to exploit the SQL injection bug. And that's it. The same kind of issue even exists in the V app according to BeVisual. Once again, an unsanitized parameter is directly included into an SQL statement, which is really bad. So those are the four most common Android app vulnerabilities. If you have any doubts or have anything more to add, 
please feel free to comment down in the comment section below i hope you liked this video if you did like this video please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below also if you're not yet a subscriber of my channel please hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel so check out be vigil as well it's an awesome tool it's free to use and you have to try it the link will be in the description below so thanks for watching again i'll see you in the next video until then cheers